Chrono Trigger, a truly timeless classic that never gets old. A story of time travel, loss, and the power of our actions. An innocent small town boy tossed into an adventure to save the world. Pretty standard for a JRPG, but it's how Chrono Trigger presents its themes that makes it so wonderful. From silent protagonist Chrono to the dark wizard Magus, each character serves an important purpose to the overall narrative. We all have those games, the ones where no matter how many times you go back and play it, you always walk away satisfied or even overjoyed. Chrono Trigger is one of those games for me. Admittedly, I wasn't playing Chrono Trigger when it released in 1995 as I was only 4 years old. It wasn't until I was a sophomore in high school, around 2007, that I finally played this classic and it's become one of my favorite games of all time. Man, I was such a little edgelord back then, wasn't I? The mid-2000s were, uh, weird. Man, I look like the poster boy for every angsty teenage nerd that loved video games and metal music too much. The soundtrack is phenomenal, the combat system was ahead of its time, and the Akira Toriyama art style have played heavily into my love for the game. Through my middle school and high school years, I was, and still am to this day, a massive Dragon Ball series fan. I used to run home from school as quickly as possible so I wouldn't miss the latest episode on Toonami. So when I was introduced to Chrono Trigger, I had to play it. I had played Final Fantasy VII, Final Fantasy X, and Kingdom Hearts, so I knew that I was in love with Squaresoft and their RPGs. Combine all of this with the fact that I had heard the soundtrack was incredible, and this game became a must-play for me. Fast forward to 2020, Final Fantasy VII Remake has come out and I've beaten the game and I decided I wanted to take a break from YouTube for a bit. I wanted to play a game that didn't feel like I was working on the channel for once, just to clear my head. That game ended up being Chrono Trigger. Having bought the Steam version, I was excited to sit down and play a game that had helped shape my teen years. Having beaten it again and with it fresh in my mind, I wanted to talk about the game in a video and how truly special it is. So it turns out my plan to avoid work and take a break actually created more work for myself. Funny how life happens to work out that way, isn't it? Chrono Trigger is the culmination of the efforts of powerhouses from both the video gaming world and the art world. Hironobu Sakaguchi, Akira Toriyama, and Yuji Horii, the founder of Dragon Quest. Titans of their respective Japanese franchises who would later be dubbed the Dream Team. Their brilliant minds came together to create one of the most ambitious and greatest JRPGs of all time. Time travel and changing destiny is something that can get out of hand quickly and sometimes leaves writers writing themselves into corners and trying to make sense of everything by the end of the movie, video game, or book. But Chrono Trigger takes the concept and simplifies it. If you change the past, you change the future. There are several examples of this, including the disappearance of Marl, saving Luka's mother from the machine, and repairing a broken down castle. Sakaguchi also felt that he didn't want players to need a guide to get through Chrono Trigger, so he decided that the team would build a guide inside the game. If you travel to the end of time, the mysterious old man there will give you subtle hints about where you should go or look next. It didn't necessarily hold your hand, but it did give you context clues on what you might want to go do. When I played through this time, I promised myself not to use a guide and that I would follow the old man's advice. It was kind of like I was following Sakaguchi's advice to some point. I have to say that it definitely made the experience more enjoyable because I had that sense of wondering and thinking, am I going to the right place? It's sometimes tough to remember a time where quest markers and hand-holding weren't commonplace in video games and Chrono Trigger pulled it off masterfully. But what makes Chrono Trigger one of the best games of all time and able to pull off these concepts so well? Its concept isn't groundbreaking, but it's the presentation of the concept that made it so wonderful. It showed us that our choices have a direct impact on our futures and that even without the power of time travel, we have the power to change our destiny for the better. And that no matter what walk of life we come from, sometimes banding together is the best option to ensure a brighter future. All connected by a common enemy in Lavos, the party is tasked with defeating this monster before he can end the world. There's a moment in Robo's future where you find a computer and you can watch the destruction of the world and the result is the reality you're currently visiting. Emerging in the year 1999, Lavos unleashes its devastating attack on the world, leaving it in ruin. To a boy from 999 years in the past and his party of time travelers, the goal becomes clear. Lavos must be stopped to avoid this terrible tragedy. It's also the mystery that unravels surrounding the characters themselves. Each character that's introduced into the story plays a vital role, and the game encourages you to build and use all of them. Most of the game is spent from the perspective of its silent protagonist, Chrono, but towards the late game, we start to see the depths of each character. They all have subplots for us to complete, each telling a deeper story about the group we've traveled with for the last 18 hours. These side quests are completely optional, but tie into the story so well you'd almost think they were part of the main story. I actually encourage you to make the effort to do these side quests, as not only do they have great rewards, but you get a richer and deeper understanding of the world and its characters. It's this type of power over the world that makes Chrono Trigger's concept of time travel so incredible and so impactful. 
But it's not just the characters that leave a lasting impression, as each location and time period in Chrono Trigger feels incredible and changes with the times. Have you ever been somewhere and wished you could see what it looked like in a different time period without the use of books? That's what Chrono Trigger feels like. You can explore the world in the game and see how it was formed from 65 million BC to the distant future of 2300 AD. You witness the events that shape the landscape and the world of the game, but you also take part in those events as well. Certain locations and dungeons are only available in certain time periods, and there are also locations that stand the test of time, including the Kingdom of Guardia. You meet people along the way that have long since been dead, yet still hold a connection to everything you do or interact with. You see the fall of Lavos from the skies, but also become the downfall of Lavos. The game truly comes full circle when it comes to storytelling and utilizing the world to build a wonderful experience. When it comes to the character Magus, it's easy to hate him for what he does throughout the story, but once you really discover what has happened to him, the character takes on a whole new image. His sad backstory of losing everything he held dear to Lavos, only wishing to get it back, has twisted his intentions to the point of becoming a villain. However, you can recruit Magus if you spare his life and he becomes an extremely powerful ally. It also gives Frog a sort of redemption moment, given that he has spent his whole life wishing to finish him off once and for all. However, even this is left to the player, as you can choose to fight and kill Magus. It's this type of character evolution and development that makes Chrono Trigger one of the best games of all time. Keep in mind, Chrono Trigger is not a long game. I think a normal playthrough takes about 20 to 25 hours, which is pretty close to what I had, but it's packed with a lot of content that feels satisfying and rewarding in more ways than just equipment and money. You feel a certain sense of joy when you create a happy ending for just random NPCs. It makes you care about the world you traversed and the characters you've met. And your choices directly impact what ending you get, as fighting Lavos at different points throughout the game will yield different results. One of its biggest features is the ability to get different endings, and to see them all requires multiple playthroughs. Chrono Trigger wasn't the first game to feature New Game Plus, but it was the first game to call it that. This feature was required if you wanted to see all the different endings the game had to offer. This was a design choice by Sakaguchi, as he wanted a game that players actually wanted to keep going back to, and created a lot of replayability. The combat is also a talking point that I love because of how well done its ATB system is. ATB was not a new concept at the time, having been used in the Final Fantasy series before this, but Chrono Trigger handled it so masterfully. Once your bars filled up, you could unleash standard attacks, techs, or use items. Techs were anything from magic spells to abilities naturally learned through things called tech points. You earn tech points through defeating enemies, and each new tech adds a new layer of strategy to the combat. Each character featured their own list of unique techs, and could even combine techs with another character to create massive damage or heal the party. They even featured triple techs, where if all three party members had a full ATV bar, they can combine for an all-out, massively damaging attack. The animations were extremely solid, flashy, and exciting. Even though I had played more modern versions of the ATB system, I still found this one to be truly special and exhilarating. The weapons, armor, and accessory system plays fairly similar to most RPGs out there, albeit with a few minor differences. Chrono Trigger used time travel to make better versions of obtainable armor, which I thought helped tie it to the concept really well. If you touched special chests in the past but didn't take the item, you could find that chest in the future and unlock its massively upgraded version. But you could also return to the past and pick up the base item as well. You could also equip accessories that gave you special triple techs. These items were found throughout the game, and since Magus is not necessarily a friendly party member, this was the only way you could learn combined techs. It's systems like these that set Chrono Trigger apart from the typical RPG experience. I also love that Frog's weapon, the Masamune, tied into several different arcs in the story. It did follow the standard RPG element of strengths and weaknesses, and if you didn't go into a boss fight prepared, it would massively punish you. Even certain standard enemies could become troublesome if you didn't have the party member that held its weakness. Speaking of party members, Chrono Trigger featured one of the best party swap systems I've ever seen, and if you needed to, you could swap party members at any time outside of combat. This made dungeons much easier to tackle because you could swap in beneficial techs that helped take down the game's hardest bosses. The game encouraged using all available party members and growing their techs and spells. Because of the tech combos, it was to your benefit to use your characters in combat, even if you didn't like said character. So now let's talk about one of the best features in Chrono Trigger, and it's its masterpiece soundtrack. And there's an interesting, yet sad story involved with its creation. Most people will look at the music credits and assume that Nobuo Ematsu had created yet another masterpiece soundtrack. However, there's a name on the credits that deserves all of the praise in the world, and it's Yasunori Mitsuda. Mitsuda was previously a sound effects creator for previous titles by Square, but now due to low wages, was reaching his final straw with the company. He walked into Hironobu Sakaguchi's office and gave him an ultimatum. Let him compose music for the company, or he was going to quit. Sakaguchi looked at him and then told him that he would compose for Chrono Trigger, and that if he did well, quote, 
maybe your salary will go up. Mitsuda didn't take the job lightly, but this is where what should have been a happy story for him turned into a nightmare. Mitsuda dedicated himself to work so much that it would almost be the death of him. Sleepless nights, constantly working in the studio, and always trying to create the next piece of music caused him health problems. He would later develop stomach ulcers, and his refusal to take a break landed him in the hospital, nearly working himself to an early grave. After being hospitalized, Nobuo Ematsu, an already legendary composer at the time, would finish out the soundtrack for him. It's Mitsuda's story that gives the soundtrack an even greater impact. A man's life was literally poured into making what would become a masterpiece in video game history. All from one sound effects technician who just wanted a chance to do something he loved. Had Sakaguchi not given that chance to him, would Chrono Trigger become the masterpiece in video game history that we know today? It's highly likely that Umatsu could have done the full job, but it's the hard work of Mitsuda that makes me appreciate it so much more. I have to thank my friend Mike over at Resident Arc for his review of Chrono Trigger where I learned about Mitsuda's tale. After beating the game again, I watched Mike's review and I understand now why this is his favorite game of all time. If you want to know an even deeper knowledge of Chrono Trigger, check out Mike's review using the link in the description below. In a time where gamers expect 100 hour RPGs to be standard, Chrono Trigger stands the test of time with its short but impactful experience. I personally find games like this more enjoyable as the story seems to be a bit more focused and leaves less room for continuity errors. There's such a thing as story fatigue and not every game needs to be a 100 hour adventure to be enjoyable. Chrono Trigger has been released on several different platforms since its initial launch, and modern ports of features that they never included in the base game. Later iterations of the game would come with more side quests, arranged musical score, and even Akira Toriyama designed cutscenes, giving Chrono Trigger even more playability. I've yet to play its sequel Chrono Cross, but with a few inspirations from Mike and my friend Craig, I plan to change that very soon. Who knows, maybe Cross will become another one of my favorite games of all time. Overall, with its masterful soundtrack, still enjoyable battle system, deep characters, and perfect use of time travel, Chrono Trigger is truly a masterpiece video game. If there was one game I'd like to see get a remaster, or even just a modern port to all systems, it would definitely be Chrono Trigger. The Steam version is great, but having it on modern consoles would be a dream come true. Chrono Trigger as a video game experience may not be a long one, but its impact will last a lifetime. So what do you think, soldiers? How do you feel about Chrono Trigger? Thanks for watching and don't forget to omni slash that like button. Let me know in the comments section below what you think of Chrono Trigger. Subscribe to the channel and ring that notification bell to join the ranks of Soldier today. And for all the latest Soldier First Class video essays, I'm Soldier First Class and I'm on to the next mission. Later guys.